This is a picture of Canada as it appears today. However, it does not appear in such simple fashion to every inhabitant of this land. But in fact, this land means vastly different things for different people and cultures. Arguably, there is no one defined Canadian culture. Many people feel that Canada is a cultural mosaic accepting all different cultures from all over the world. But what about the cultures which were here first, the indigenous cultures of Canada? Somehow they are not always considered in the popular notions of what it means to be Canadian. It is important to realize, though, that there are nearly a million Aboriginal people living in Canada today, with approximately 70% of them living in urban areas among the greater population. However, the interesting thing about this population is that they have their own spaces, known as reserves, which have been etched out in dealings with the government throughout history. The red dots on this picture roughly indicate the location of Canada's reserves. There are over 2,300 reserves in Canada alone, most in the provinces of BC, Alberta, and Ontario. Let's take a closer look at Ontario. In Ontario, nearly 50% of the Aboriginal population lives on reserves, as opposed to a national average of 30. Although reserves place Native people in a position of disadvantage in terms of available resources, it is important to recognize the ability they have to keep the culture of Ontario's 126 bands alive. Ultimately, instead of thinking of only Ontario's colonial roots in Britain, the histories of Aboriginal cultures, such as that of the Anishinaabe, Tamagama Ojibwe, Mohawk, Iroquois, and many more should also be considered. This final flag is that of the Iroquois Confederacy and is based on the Hiawatha Wampum Belt, which was a symbol of peace when they and their enemies would put down their arms in battle. The Hiawatha people were once part of a much larger group known as the Mississaugas of Mud Lake, Scugog Lake, and Rice Lake. However, in 1880, the group surrendered an extensive portion of their territory to the Crown, which led to a formation of three small groups. The following map acts as a virtual tour of the Hiawatha First Nation Reserve at Rice Lake. This tour will be of practical use to the residents of Hiawatha First Nation as it will explore some important resources and services offered here. Furthermore, this tour will help to explain to the general public of Piebro and the surrounding area that this reserve functions very similarly to that of their own community. Our first stop on this tour is Rice Lake. As the reserve lays lakeside, for generations these people have thrashed wild rice from the stocks growing in the shallow lake as a means for providing food for the community. Unfortunately, however, with the creation of a complex waterway upstream on the Autonomy River, water levels in Rice Lake have risen significantly and destroyed much of the wild rice which once grew here. The Autonomy River connects Rice Lake to the larger nearby city of Peterborough, Ontario. Today, the Autonomy River near Hiawatha First Nation is a prime fishing spot for largemouth bass. Much of the diet of the people of Hiawatha is based on fish from the surrounding water making this river a great amenity. Our next stop is the Hiawatha First Nation Cemetery. Described by these people as a beautiful country cemetery, this place holds significant emotional value to the community, as beloved residents of the reserve are buried here. Nearby to the cemetery is the Hiawatha First Nation powwow ground. This year, Hiawatha will hold its 19th annual Celebration of All Nations powwow at this ground. As a Peterborough resident, I have attended this event multiple times with my family as a child. I recall there being a number of people from many different backgrounds appreciating the Native traditions. Furthermore, entertainment such as music, dance, and crafts are enjoyed here, as Hiawatha art is put on display in all of its forms. Also nearby is the Dana Potash Memorial Ballpark. Named after a longtime resident, this beautiful baseball diamond doubles as a public park for children to play. Recently, there has been an installation of a playground and a new fence around the perimeter of the park so that parents know that their children will be having a safe and enjoyable time at the diamond. Across the reserve is the Hiawatha Administration Office. There are a wide variety of services offered by the Administration Office, which helps hold the community at Hiawatha together. For example, Residents can come here with inquiries about membership, such as obtaining a status card, snow removal requests, and organizing public events at the reserve. The office also has an employment and training service, which helps people prepare resumes, search for jobs, and provide funding for skills training if possible. Among all other services offered by the administration, the police also operate out of this office and settle any kinds of matters on reserve which concern the residents. Seen here is the Hiawatha Life Center. The Life Center is home to health and social programs for Hiawatha First Nation, the community's daycare, as well as showcasing the War Memorial Monument to honor those 
community members who serve. It also has the elders room, where community elders can come and sit, meet and relax in a comfortable setting. Just 20 minutes outside of the reserve to the east is Serpent Mount Park, an ancient cemetery which dates back to approximately 300 BC. This park is operated by the Hiawatha people and is now a recognized national historic site in Canada, which offers many experiences such as native art workshops, fishing, and bird watching. This concludes our tour of Hiawatha First Nation. I hope that this tour has been effective in explaining the fundamentals of the Hiawatha First Nation and educating the public on how much this reserve and other reserves in Canada have to offer.